So in the smart home world, one of my favorite things is smart lighting, and you're truly making your home smarter and not just a remote control home. So how do you do that? Well, a wireless motion sensor. And there's no wiring, you just stick it on the wall and add it into your hub and rock and roll. Now, which one should you pick? I don't know, which one's bad, which one's good? Let's check them all out. So one we won't be checking out that we've done before is the WISE wireless sensors. And I remember did a past video on them. They did work great using a little USB hub and we used them in Home Assistant. Now, hey, if you wanna do something with the WISE ecosystem with the whole monitoring bundle, and know this isn't a commercial for them, it's a great little bundle. You can check them out. Maybe we'll do even a little video of it and we'll show a couple of clips of things on that. But that's locked away in their cloud. So if you're one of the guys like me that like to do the local thing and like to have things work and not depend on the internet because sometimes the internet's down and you still want your smart home to work because you know you'll be bragging to somebody about your smart home and the internet goes out and stuff just doesn't work and that sucks. Keep it local and make it yours. So how do you do that? Well, we've had a bunch of different videos on how to set up Zigbee with using Zigbee to MQTT, and that is using Home Assistant. But hey, if you are doing things with other hubs such as SmartThings or Amazon Echo or OpenHab, there's a bunch of different hubs that use Zigbee because it's kind of an open protocol that a lot of different things support. And a lot of these motion sensors will work with them. And there's no special stuff to flash or wires or install or whatever. All of these Zigbee products will show you or you just put the batteries in them and you hold the little reset button, you pair them straight up and you rock and roll. So one thing you won't see here is going to be any Z-Wave products. I don't have any Z-Wave because of some issues I've had, which is local to me. Nothing wrong with Z-Wave, no hate for it. But hey, if you want to check out some Z-Wave stuff, maybe we'll leave a link to some other channel that's does a lot of dancing and blinking LED stuff on their things and have some great thumbnails showing them. Now we'll leave all the links down below, of course, and those are typically gonna be affiliate links. There's no additional cost to you. And the way those work, you just click them and rock and roll and don't even have to buy those exact products and it does usually help out the channel. So in no particular order, I'm gonna show the sensors and this is it's a pack of triple a batteries just no no commercial for them i just wanted to give you a size relations because everybody knows what a triple a battery is or should so this one is i would say a pretty pricey one but it does work well and there is a lot of features to it and a lot of customizations to it that you can change for various sensitivities the leds it does have all the different lux sensors and everything, it does more than just a motion sensor. And of course it does work with the Philips Hue ecosystem, which is also, will work with, I use it with Digby to MQTT. Now I'm gonna leave the little display over it so we can actually see in real time what is going on with the sensors to kind of give you an idea of what, how things trigger and whatnot. It does come with a little mounting bracket that they, you can pivot things on and uh, you can pick this up in various stores locally in the U.S. such as like Best Buy and Target, etc. and probably even Walmart. Um, and it does have your triple A's inside and there's nothing really to it. I do prefer to have the larger batteries. Now the downside of that, it does make the sensor a lot larger, but hey, I like having the larger standard batteries because it's easy to go get some batteries around that aren't like the little coin cells. Third reality, or they'll call it the 3R, this little icon here. And one thing I did like about this one was just the easy use of the mounting bracket. 
it just slides off and you do mount this piece right here you mount that on the wall and then you'll come in and take the sensor and pop it right in and it's designed to be mounted like this with this being the up it has a little angle to it as you can see and what that's for is well they say it's supposed to be quote unquote pet immune because this is angled up a little bit and that way it won't see a shorter dog now of course we did try that with the dog and it's not at lower angle it doesn't work but that's their idea of trying to make that pet immune so i do like that this one also has the AAA batteries inside and right here you can see the small little black button you can just touch it with your finger and that is the pairing button you hold it down for like five seconds the little led will start blinking and you pair it with your smart home app now this is the lin kind and we do like a lot of the different lin kind zigbee stuff from the water leak sensors to the door sensors but the only thing i will say i don't like is this crazy branding they do on the side and all this on the side you could have put that on the back I, especially this i kind of get putting your brand on there but hey now we're gonna have to take some acetone and wipe both sides of it yeah now the bracket they have on here is they want you to slide it up and what that does actually when you slide that up there's a little switch inside and now it just triggered showing it's this tampered and you could do some sort of automation and say, hey, this one's tampered. Someone's messing with their motion sensor, like the kid's taking it down or whatever, like that would ever happen. And that just pretty cool little feature if you need that. Now inside, there is a CR2450. And that's a little coin cell battery. So maybe you won't get as much battery life out of them because these that little coin cells. And But these sensors do sleep a lot. So we'll see. So there's the little reset button right here, and that is going to let you pair it up with the smart home app or whatever. You hold it down for like five seconds, and that's it. So this big boy here, the AGS Home. Now, this is a Tuya rebrand. I have seen several different other models on Amazon, and it... They come up in Zigbee to MQTT as a Tuya model, and it does work, but, you know, you could find other ones. Now, one of the cool things I did see on this one is it does have an on and off switch on the back. So if you didn't want to use it anymore, flip it to off and save your batteries and then pop your batteries out. The little reset, that is for using like a little SIM card tool and holding it down to do the pairing process same thing you just typically hold it down for like five seconds and the led blinks and you pair it up with your smart home app or hub now there's three triple a's inside this one so it is a larger sensor but hey maybe you'll get a lot of battery life out of it with three triple a's this is the sewn off little zigbee motion sensor it does have quite a big lens on it it has a wide angle to it but it is rather small there's no mounting holes or anything on it they give you the little 3m tape to stick it up to things and you can use whatever and then it does have the little reset on the side that you use the sim card tool on i think they even give you one where to pair it up with the apps or smart home hub now to pop this guy off it does have a CR2450 inside. Again, same little coin cell. And I kind of like more of the standard AAA myself. We did have one issue with this, and I'll show you in one of the clips. So this might not be that good for smart lighting and areas, but we'll get to that later in the video. Now, this one, the Iris V3. Now, I at the time i could find these and they were one of the favorites on our discord channel for doing zigbee motion but as we all know if you've been in the us lowe's did stop doing their iris smart home products now you can find these on ebay some refurbs or whatever they're really great sensors so if you do see them around for a great price let us know down in the comments down below they do have the little reset button on the side. It does have a little different pairing procedure. 
You can Google around, you can find the manual, but basically you have to hold the button down and you do take the battery out, with, then hold the button down and put the battery back in. You wait for the LED to go out and then you let off the button. It goes into the pairing mode. Now this one does have a couple different other sensors to it. I think it has temperature and maybe even humidity, which is weird. But so if you get it, if you can find these, definitely let us know. Now for the weird little different guy. And this does come with like a little stand type deal if you did want to mount it somewhere. And I'll show one of the pictures. And there is, this battery cover is kind of hard to get off, but it's a CR2450 underneath. The reset button is right here on the side. You can push it with your finger or you could use a little tool and the LED is up here and the PIR face is there. Interesting little guy and of course it does have a sticker on the bottom if you did want to just stick this somewhere. But it is, as you can see, pretty small and does have a lux sensor which shows you how much light is in the room. And there may be temperature, but I don't know, we'll, we'll show some of that later in the video since I'm getting all these mixed up. Now for that little bonus thing, if you were curious of, well, these won't be included because I don't even think they make these anymore. These were the little wise sensors that were pretty awesome for their size, I mean, they're stupid small on how they're probably smaller than the other, the Zigbee ones. And they were worked in the 900 megahertz band, but you did have to use their special little hub. But some cool people that were smarter than me were able to take their little USB radio and allow us to use it locally. But then they had some issues where when the batteries would die, they would brick themselves. So I'm guessing that's probably why they discontinued them. I, I'm not going to go there. That's a whole nother soapbox. But this was the newer model that had their whole little security panel system with the keypad and the door sensors and everything. And they definitely went with a larger deal this time around. I think it does work with the older hub. Some of the smart people fixed that up. But... It's kind of a closed ecosystem, so it's they want to do something where we can do it totally local without the cloud. Maybe we'll cover something different with the Y sensors. So we've tested every single motion sensor, and I chose an area down in the hallway, and that way it was a very long distance for being able to pick up motion, and we even tried doing pets and the kids and walking to it, walking from it, and even jumping into it. And there was another one with the Sonoff one. I wanted to show an issue that it had. And you'll know exactly what happens whenever we show that little screen with it. So we'll run through all those little clips and test and you can find the best Zigbee sensor that fits your needs the best. So one feature I did want to talk about that 
a lot of times may not be understood is the cool down period. And what a cool down period is, is basically when motion stops and then how long does it take for the sensor to reset back to showing clear or not detected. Now some sensors you can adjust it such as the Philips Hue one, but some of them others such as the Xiaomi Aquaria one, you can do a hardware mod, but it potentially may impact battery life. Now that one was particularly long. It's like a minute and a half and it even made doing some of these segments a true PETA. So I did go scour around through different manufacturers, websites, and some forums to find various specs on these sensors. I didn't want to show them before the test because I didn't want to kind of taint things of, you know, getting too many numbers in your head because a lot of times the manufacturers may exaggerate on the range of some of these sensors. We'll do a little overlay of all the numbers and you can just go ahead and pause it and check things out for you. And we did include the cooldown periods. And I did mention several times, so we'll address that elephant in the room, the Sonoff motion sensor. Right off the bat, it's not gonna be on my recommended list. It had some issues where even with continued motion, it would just go back to clear. Even though motion was blatantly happening i mean crazy even motion i had my son doing his thing and he may need a little help there but hey that's guess that's my son right one of the issues with it would be if you had that in an area where you're using it for automated lighting and you're guaranteeing that the person moving around is going to keep that sensor triggered well if it goes back to clear then your automation is going to think that there's no one in the room and then of course you're going to piss off that significant other as they're doing the laundry and the lights go dark because of your stupid sensor and then those just points go way down so don't use that one so which one is the best well that's all subjective and i really would never really say there is a best because everybody's needs and where they can get things is always going to be different than say even myself. So go through and look at some of the tests, pause it, rewind it, whatever you want to do is go through and find out what you may think is the best for you. Hey, maybe buy one or two that you like. Now that Philips Hue one, I will say I was really impressed with it, but ugh, that price, I mean, it was sometimes even double or triple what some of the other motion sensors are. And if I was putting some around, I'd probably do a combination maybe of that Philips Hue where I really needed it in some good areas combined with maybe that Linkine sensor. I don't know, they all kind of had their little quirks and everything and they're gonna all react differently based on the different installations. If you've got any other sensors you would like us to test or maybe ones I can get my hands on in the US, definitely let us know down in the comments down below and like to check out some of those sensors and see how they compare to these few sensors. So I appreciate you watching. Smash that like button, dislike button or whatever it may be and y'all take care. Jeez, damn it. Oh my god. He just triggered them all. He just triggered all of them. Gee! Try it one time.